Forgot about that stupid mailbox. It is hideous, dude. So why was the drag rail gone so long? Well, uh, what happened was uh, something came in contact between this flywheel and the coils. Um, don't know what happened. Could have been as simple as a rock. Uh, but uh, it locked up the engine and the thing sat up for a while before we even tore, tore into it and there was enough carnage there that we just said, all right, we're done. But that's over now because we're putting it back together. That's right. Yeah. So we need to find some new coils, put a carburetor on it, put the cover back on and bring it over, stick it on the rail and see if it'll run. Yep. That's not good for business. No, that coil probably is no good. So we had to run to the warehouse and we had to rob the coils off the Honda Davidson. Yep. Uh, if y'all don't know, the Honda Davidson has a Predator 670 on it. If y'all hadn't seen it, check it out. In, uh, when did we do it? Two years ago or something? Yeah, it was a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, so now we uh, disabled one motorcycle. It was licensed and insured, John. But all in the name of horsepower, right? Yeah. All right. We disabled two bikes. Yeah, we sure did. Guess what? We had to rob a carburetor off of my Triumph motorcycle. I'm pretty sure that this will run on this engine, but I'm not sure how well it's going to run because it's jetted for a 650 and this is a 670. So we might have to do some playing around with the jets. But let's get to uh, mounting the fan on. And the magnet. I gotta replace this coil because it is packed full of aluminium. Aluminium, as Russell would say. All right, man, we are about ready to do some gapping on this. And Let's make I, it nice and wide. Man, I'm going to give it the gapple sauce, man. We are going mega wide with this gap. All right? Sounds good. Yep. Now, I can't find our... Uh, <laughs> Feeler gauges. Feeler gauges, so I'm using... A little shank from uh, a Dremel. Dremel. Tool. That should be plenty. It's, it's the mega gap here. I hope it'll run. <laughs> um, it should. Remember, uh, on, I mean, we had it gapped pretty wide before. I think really close to where we're at. Maybe, maybe just a little bit tighter than before, and it ran. These are some really powerful magnets. Look at that. There we go. Remember the 228 build? Yes, we, indeed. We went 80 thousandths. Yep. We had to go over twice what the original factory recommendation was. Not sure why. Uh, well, because the magnets were so powerful that uh, this thing stripped out. Uh, the magnets are so powerful, it was uh, too much for the coils and actually burning up the coils. All right, man, it's time for the cover. I forgot how we did the... Uh, Little epoxy sticker epoxy, job. Epoxy, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Because <laughs> we, we had the twin carbs set up, and they were coming through the cover. And when, when we, we went back to the... Single carburetor. Single carburetor. It wasn't this motor. It was the other motor. We stole this cover off the other motor. Oh! It'll be fine. Anyway, we just plugged the holes and we decided to put some stickers there with some epoxy. Is, is it right if we use this or do we need to go back to the warehouse to get the other? We cover? can use that one. Okay. How's this janky? It's, it's art. Would you call the Mona Lisa janky? I think we already mentioned that this carburetor is off of Ike's 1968 Triumph motorcycle. It's a 650. It's a Makuni carburetor. Uh, looks like a 34 millimeter, which is what we had on this and it seemed to perform pretty well in the past, but we can't find any markings on it. Dropped the bowl. It had some corrosion. It wasn't so bad. We cleaned it out. We had a small obstruction in the main jet, but we uh, took care of that. It looks like uh, someone had been running ethanol fuel in it in the recent past, but it wasn't bad. 
we got it back together or we got it cleaned out and now we're going to put it back together so my question has always been if this carburetor is not for aircraft use what carburetor is used for aircrafts maybe we need it because <laughs> we want this thing to fly hey <laughs> that's a serious question though do you know no i'm not the person to ask i don't like to fly i knew that <laughs> So we're also going to take this uh, this pod off and try to run our ducting for our less restrictive or for our pod setup that we know isn't restrictive. Because if I had to guess, that might be a little bit of a restriction. Definitely needs cleaned out. That thing is nasty. I, I say we uh, we just try it and see what happens with that pod and see what happens. Sure. Why not? Test hits in the driveway are free and unlimited, and we don't have to wait in the line, so. Yep. Good to remind the neighbors that. <laughs> we're still Cars and cameras is still in town. <laughs> there it is. Like it was meant to be. Absolutely. So, at this point, we pretty much need to put it on the chassis, don't we? Because everything else, all the torque converter stuff's got to happen... Uh, I don't remember. There's a sequence to how uh, this stuff goes. Uh, I don't don't we need to put the torque converter on yeah, and I then put right. it in there? Yeah. I kind of like the uh, it'll be fine cover on this thing, man. Yeah, it looks like a rhinoceros with that intake. To put the power to the wheels on this drag rail, we are using the mighty 780 torque converter from GoPowerSports.com. This thing is pure beef. Look at the thickness of that backing plate. It's rated between 18 to 30 horsepower applications. However, we've been running it on the drag rail with like 55 horsepower for dozens and dozens of passes and it's held up just fine. Also, this exact setup has been on our Honda Davidson street legal motorcycle and we have hundreds of miles on this setup too so yeah it's pure beef anyway uh the driver here you can get different stall weights for it this is the standard stall i want to say it's around 2600 rpm engagement we did have a high stall we ordered separate weights from go power sports for those for drag racing we misplaced it uh so we're going to be installing that in the future so we're going with the standard stall anyway pure beef one inch bore high power applications Check it out in a link in the description, again, from GoPowerSports.com. You might need a buddy for this part, because it is heavy. An important thing to note about this torque converter setup, or most torque converter setups, is that you need to make sure your alignment is correct. So you see how that front pulley is way like pushed in compared to the rear pulley. Yeah, you're gonna need some washers to space it out to make them even with each other. Uh, and the amount of washers you're gonna need is gonna vary depending on your application. Are we ready? Yeah, man. Ready for the 670 to re-meet the drag rail. Yes. It's back together and it's glorious. Hey, you know why we uh, you know why we use that uh, scoop? Because this thing hauls the mail. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't because the other one was flipped in a horrific accident. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, man. Yeah. It's the moment of truth. Yeah. Man, let's never let something sit apart for so long again. It took so long to just wrangle parts together for this thing. Wasn't that bad? It was unfortunate. Not bad. All right, fuel pump. Yeah. There you go. I can hear it working. Just cool. need a little extra help. Oh my. Oh, were we losing fuel? Yeah. Yes, that's because. But why the, is that? The valve is on. So the return ought to be working. All right, so... So for new viewers who may not know this build, our fuel pump is pumping uh, at a pressure rate that overpowers the float bowls in the carburetor. So it'll just push fuel 
out the overflow. So we had to come up with a janky uh, return line, which we kind of are able to adjust with this fuel cutoff here. Well, it's wide open and we're still getting fuel pouring out. Well, we did have the carburetor apart. The float could be messed up. It could be. Uh, yeah, I thought I put it back the same way, but Drop you know the how bowl. I am. Drop the bowl real quick. Yeah. All, All right, right, so we're going to take the carburetor off and drop the bowl and see what's going on. Yep. All right, man. Um, everything looked fine inside the carburetor, but I did adjust the float bowl level. So maybe it'll shut the valve off, you know. In time. Faster, harder. Hey, is that it? I think you might have fixed it, bud. I think so. All right, simple adjustment. Let's clean this stuff up, man, and try to crank her up. Sounds good. Should we back jack this thing up? Yes. Yeah, we should. So we can tell you from experience that every single time you put something together for the first time or you make some major carburetor adjustments, you absolutely need to jack the rear wheels up in the air or whatever the driven wheels are up in the air because uh, you might have a runaway land missile. Can I sit in it and crank it? Yeah. All right, we're just assuming that this is going to run. I mean, we got them coils gapped. Yeah, exactly. Like, gapped. I'm going to have a wet butt. Worth it if it runs. Oh, man, we got to choke it. Oh. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Battery. Get the battery charger. Hit it, man. All right, man, here we go. I think that battery is just toast. We got a new battery? You ready to try it again? Yeah. Hit it, dude. All right. Remember, we always had problems with starting it up. We need to see if we have spark. Yeah, let's. We might have gapped it too much. Here we go. Yeah. Hold it. Turn the switch the other way. Hold it. Hold on. Let me unplug it. All right. Let's try it again. Ready? Yeah. So we messed with this thing for like an hour trying to get it running and no matter what we did, we didn't have any spark. Uh, we, we knew that the coils came off of a good running 670, the spark plugs worked and all we could do was get like half spark on one cylinder and the other one had nothing. And here we come out a couple hours later to work on something else and I tap the start button and it fires right up. So we're going to do some uh, pulls in the driveway while it's running. This thing sounds good. might just make it to the track this week. It's moving out. Ready. This thing is looking good. It feels really good. Yeah, how, uh, how, how does that work? How does what work? It sits for two years and then it, maybe I just forgot how fast it was, but it looks really good. Well, I mean, it, it was running, what, 980s? Yeah, I mean, or like was it, it wasn't. was it 940s? It looks, no, it wasn't 940s. It looked uh, faster. It looked like it launched harder tonight than it ever has. It, it felt really good. Yeah, it looked good. So, I swear you popped the front wheels a couple times, too. Really? Just a little bit, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Feels really good. It looks good. Uh, we need a better battery. Better battery. Better battery. Yeah, which is annoying because we already have that behemoth on there. Yeah. Well, I mean, that battery is not oh, it's holding an old battery. charge. It's an, it's right. a, um, it should be under warranty still. It, I dated it. It was a, I bought it 2018. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Or something like that. We might be ready to do this, man. What, tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if it cranks up. Yeah, I know. All right, so, uh, well, I think that maybe tomorrow, why don't we, why don't we just, I talk to the battery guy. Yep. See about getting a battery. Yep. And tomorrow we just make sure we're at the drag strip when, when the gates open? Yeah, that sounds good. We need to make sure we're ready for our upcoming road trip on Trail 70s, too. Yeah, well, we can we can work on that tomorrow morning and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, work on it in the morning, have everything ready, and take this, uh, make some passes with it, and then have an early night. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a little afraid of the weak spark that we have, but... Yeah. I mean, it would suck to go all the way to the and then it strip just and it run. not crank up. So maybe we need to bring something else to also run as a backup. We can bring a couple of mini bikes. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good to me. For the Cozy Coupe, we built a chain guard that doubles as a axle strengthener of some kind. Uh, it basically is a channel of square tubing that the chain runs inside of, and it helps keep it on. And we should be able to eliminate this jack shaft which will free up i don't know half a horsepower or something like that yeah i mean every every little bit helps that's right uh but it'll look better it'll be a little bit lighter maybe maybe not now it's gonna be pretty heavy it's but, gonna uh, be about the same weight yeah but it'll look better and then uh yeah dude we're gonna be making some upgrades to this thing axles the chain guard maybe i don't know you brought up boost the other day for me it wasn't for once it wasn't me that brought up boost well so yeah. we can look into it it I've always been afraid of getting much more out of this engine because of these jack shafts and axles bending. But if we get a stronger axle, I don't see any problem with getting more uh, Bump it up, dude. power. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Thanks for tuning into this episode, everybody. When we bring the drag rail back to the drag strip, what are we going to run in the eighth mile? I think previously we had run maybe a, a 980 before. It wasn't fast. So let us know down in the comments what you think it's going to run. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe to Cars and Cameras to catch this thing at the drag strip. Of course, visit GoPowerSports.com for all your go-kart, mini bike, or custom drag rail needs. Uh, Cars-Cameras.com. Pick up one of our t-shirts to help support our future builds. Ike, what do you got, man? Yeah, check me out. At Isaac, it'll be fine. I'm glad this thing is back. Anyway, thanks for watching this again, guys. We'll see you next time.